All right, everyone, now that you're really familiar with all the phyla, let's go ahead and dive into our first phylum, the phylum of the sponges. Not that sponges, the sponges. Can't see that so well, can you? Real life Patterson, why don't you show them that picture? Because it's got a... All right, all right. Sponges, phylum, periphera. All sponges belong to the same phylum. That phylum is periphera. They got this name for um, the pores. The pores. Oh, I know, I forgot to do the hand thing. Just fine, fine. I'll let you have some more points, which are divided into two main types. They have, the pores are divided into two main types. They have ostea, and they also have oscula. Water enters through the smaller ostea, right? Water in ostea, and exits through the larger oscula, which is plural. If it's just one, it'd be osculum. The large pore at the top, blue screen, regular screen, the large pore at the top is a massive singular osculum. That's right, out. The water goes out. Inside they have a central cavity called a sponge seal or sponge cavity. All sponges are aquatic, meaning they live under the water. Go ahead and sketch yourself some sponges. Get crazy. Real life Patterson, show them the goods. Sponges are sessile, means they don't have any means of I don't really know how this dance goes Come on baby Alright so they have no means of locomotion No that's going from A to B like a locomotive engine so they, they, they don't do that. They're sessile. They have no means of locomotion. Generally, they are attached to blanks. Yes, to rocks on the seafloor. And sometimes they may also be attached to coral. Sometimes they're attached to coral. That's a very good coral. However, they are, even though they don't seem like it, very aggressive consumers. They're vicious. Uh, they're, they're hungry, they're feeding machines, and they're eating all the time, all the time, every time. Vicious, nasty corals. Oh no, sponges, sponges. Corals are nasty too. Alright, so, inside uh, they have blankalized cells. Yes, they're specialized cells. They're different from each other. So inside they have specialized cells called coanocytes. This is a picture of a coanocyte. that have Flagella at the top, yes, they have the tail up at the top. These flagella pull water into the central cavity, which is on here. Very real life Patterson, come on, show them this big, just put it over top of the video. They don't need to look at me. Right there it is. Fine, if you want to do it, the picture so bad, why don't you just take over for a little bit and explain this whole entire system to them. Hmm, 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 fine, fine. Sit down over here. Sponges have a very interesting skeleton. See, and uh, sponges. Sponges have a very interesting skeleton made out of an imaginative material called spongin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Spongin. Some have stronger skeletons made of uh, spicules. Spicules. These spicules are composed mostly of silica. Mostly of silica. Or sometimes they are composed of blank, blank. Calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate. Sometimes they're composed of calcium carbonate. I'm going to get my mouse. The wand is letting me down here. By the way, Blancica is what sand is made from. Silica is what sand is made from. It's also on the outside of the horse tails. Those plants. They look like horsey tails. Calcium carbonate 
is what composes the blanks shells. Mollusk shells, yeah, the mollusks now. There are three main types of sponges based on their skeleton structure. There are ones that have more calcium carbonate, and those are called calcareous sponges. Uh-huh, look at that. Those are called calcareous sponges. There are also those, uh, where'd I go? No, oh, there's also those that have more silica, looks like glass, and they are called glass sponges. Mm-hmm, glass sponges. Real Life Patterson has pictures for you, too. So there'll be some flipper flopping back and forth a rating. And in addition to that, uh, there are also damo sponges, which are like sort of halfway in betweeners. Delightful. All right, let's talk about sponge reproduction. Sponges, they reproduce asexually means not sexually this means the offspring our sponges are exact clones of the parental sponge unit they also can regenerate when they are cut into pieces in fact for a very long time many yes scientists do the science for a very long time many scientists thought that they were not really an animal but they were colonies of unicellular organisms because of the whole, uh, you know, them being so simple and you can put them through a cheese grater. And especially due to the lack of any kind of tissue structure, they were almost right. Sponges have how many main ways to reproduce asexually? Give me a number. Less than five. Three, yes, three. Sponges have three main ways to reproduce asexually. They may shed small blanks that grow into a new sponge. Yes, fragments or pieces. They may shed these little fragments and pieces grow a new sponge. They may also just not fart, bud a new sponge right off the side and that new sponge will be, yes, attached to the parent because that's how budding works, you know, just like a strawberry and the budding and then coming off. And last, they may also produce these little tiny things called gemules because they look like gems, called gemules when conditions are poor. Additionally, most sponges may also reproduce sexually, sexually. In this case, they are blank reditic, which means both male and female parts and in sponges they're fully functional. Yes, they're both hermaphroditic. And I believe a real life Patterson has a cool picture to show you now. So virtual Patterson, out. I said out. Cut, cut the video. Thank you.